And we're back with some more RimWorld, and today I'm going to be going through traits. The ones I think are the best, the ones I think are the worst. Now, do you remember this is all sort of associated with my particular playstyle? Uh, like, for example, I despise pawns who are incapable of violent. Namely because I find them completely useless. I run on higher end difficulties, so what happens is if I am missing a pawn that can't be shooting, that can lead to a cascade effect where I just don't have enough to hold off the enemies that are coming at me, and then suddenly I end up getting pawns injured or losing them, when if we just had that little bit more firepower, we could have held off. So that's why I don't like pawns that are incapable of violent. If you play a different playstyle, this may be just fine for you, and you can turn them into medics and stuff like that. So there is a little bit of personal preference here. With all that out of the way, let's just get into it. Now, the first trait, or the worst trait, were uh, these are just traits that I will outright reject upon pretty much in all instances, unless I'm absolutely desperate. And the first is slow learner. Global learning factor is reduced by 75%. That's shooting. That's every single trait. Even if they have a double burning passion in something, it gets that 75 negative modifier on it, which means they're, they're just terrible. Don't pick them, ever. Hats for the lot of them. Then we've got your sickly. Sickly is really annoying in that this person ends up on their own separate form of sickness routines, as in they're on average going to get sick once every 30 days, on top of any other sicknesses that are going to hit your tile. So that just means you're going to spend more time in bed, soaking up your valuable medicine, just stay away from them. It doesn't mean they won't recover as quickly, they will recover just as quickly as anyone else, it just means they get more sicknesses. It's really frustrating. Then you've got your pyromaniacs, everyone loves to hate these ones. They will occasionally just go on random fire starting sprees, doesn't matter if you keep them happy or not. They will just go on random fire starting sprees, even if they're happy, so yeah, get rid of them. And they can't put out fires. They have been known to set fire to bases after other pawns were injured. Stay away. Gourmand. Now, I know this is going to annoy a lot of people, but I put this here because, well, it's not just the hunger rate. They eat 50% more food just straight up than everyone else all the time, which is really frustrating. They spend more time going back and forth with it. But they also get hunger binges. They will go on mental breaks where they pig out on food. And it doesn't matter how happy you keep them, that just happens. So with Pyromaniac and Gourmand, I kind of lumped them into the same thing. They result in mental breaks that you cannot prevent, that will just happen at probably the worst time possible. So I try and remove them from my play entirely. And finally is Wimp. It pretty much means they're incapable of violence. Because if anyone hits them, even just a little bit, they have a tendency to go down almost straight away. That's like two punches. Like, nothing. Yep. Oh, and the only reason the first one didn't knock them down because it was probably the destroyed middle finger didn't give them enough pain. Anyway... That brings us over to the traits of bad. Now, bad traits are not necessarily a deal breaker. You could have other positive traits on top of that. In fact, you can survive with multiple bad traits, but it's just you would really prefer to avoid them. The first and most obvious one is depressive. It gives a minus 12 mood penalty. This will come up under here. For example, this pawn is going to end up very unhappy. If, they no if a pawn normally goes below about 35%, they go into minor break threshold, and you want to keep their mood above that. This pawn here, unfortunately, has Depressive, which is a minus 12, Pessimist, which is a minus 6. Both of those are just straight-up bads, and you can't get rid of them. You can't work around them, it's just you wouldn't want to. Body Purist, oh god. So Body Purist means if they have any artificial body parts on them, they really, really hate it. This one here has a prosthetic heart keeping them alive, and they're not happy about it. In fact, they have a minus 10 mood penalty from that. Your pawns will get injured over time. The longer you have a pawn, the more likely they are to use the fingers, toes. Now, if you do have the newest... Ideology DLC, you can fix lost fingers and toes. However, limbs, once a limb is gone, it's gone. And if you have to install a bionic on this person, they're always going to have a minus 10. I try to avoid body purists if at all possible. Volatile is, oh, is a bit like pessimist and depressive. It increases their, it decreases the mental break threshold for them. As in, normally it's 35%, but with volatile, it adds an actual 15% to it. So now they have a minor break threshold at 50, 29% is major and extreme at 7.1. This is bad. The minor break threshold is not the, the, the killer for me here, it's the major break, major break. Once they get into major break, that's when they do some of the nastier things they can when they have a mental break. And once they get into extreme break threshold, they do some of the really bad things like kill your other pawns. So, by and large, stay away from anything that increases their mental break threshold. So, mental break threshold by 15%, uh, nervous gives mental break threshold plus 8%, and there's no bonuses to these. Jealous is one that's going to be a bit weird to be in the bad section, but this one here, it's degrading to have a less impressive bedroom than someone else. This just is a straight-up negative. For example, this person is jealous of Fat Man Slim's bedroom, and they have a minus 8. This is even worse if you've got the royalty DLC installed, because if you have any nobles, they will require a fancy bedroom, and if you do have any nobles, your jealous pawn is going to demand a bedroom as fancy as your nobles, which usually is not possible, which means they're just going to have a minus 8 for the whole game. So I tend to just dump that in with pessimist and depressive. Brawler is in here, and this will actually probably annoy some people, but it only gives a flat plus 4 melee bonus, and a plus four melee chance to hit. 
that's about it. You can't use them as a shooter, and most of the brawlers I've run in all of my games, they tend to just not get a lot of kills. The problem is, you put them up front to, to tank stuff, they just get knocked down. They, they tend to be just meat shields. I would far prefer to have, like, tanking animals or something like that than use a brawler. I would prefer to equip all my people with guns, and brawler just doesn't work with my playstyle. Lazy. Yeah, this is pretty much a, a no-brainer. If they've got a global work speed penalty of minus 20%, or slothful, minus 35%, they can't really do anything good in the artistic, the medical, the social. Now, there's an exception to this. They can be used for just cleaning and hauling. If they're just going to clean stuff up or haul stuff around the place, this doesn't really affect them that much. So, yeah, on those type of pawns, you don't have to care. But by and large, for any pawn that does anything involving medical, uh, intellectual, crafting, plants, cooking, mining, construction, yep, it's all just bad all the way around. Next up, we've got your mildly bads. These are bad enough that I would try to avo actively try to avoid them, but I could be convinced. First one up is Careful Shooter. This one doesn't seem that bad, but it's actually pretty terrible in a lot of ways. It increases your aiming time by 25% while simultaneously increasing your, sh increasing your shooting accuracy. You think, oh, stick, give them a sniper. No, never give them a sniper or a bolt action. The reason being the aiming times on those is the longest of most of the weapons, meaning you're getting the worst out of them. This is the place where they would actually benefit the most, but it simultaneously slows down their, their output, their damage output so much it makes them useless. Give them an assault rifle that's a decent weapon with a shorter cooldown, they'll do a little bit better with that. The problem is, though, all the other pawns will catch up in the shooting accuracy, and once you get above about, like, say, 12 to 15 shooting accuracy, none of it really matters anymore. Like, get up to about 12, and, and most other pawns will be just out DPSing them, despite their shooting accuracy bonus. So yeah, just generally avoid it. As well as that, it also affects the so, casting time of a lot of abilities. So if you want to use a jump jet pack, it takes 25% longer to activate it. Want to cast a Psy spell like Berserk Pulse? Same thing. Any of those activation abilities, they're all affected by the aiming time on this. It's a little bit... Of, it's got more of downsides than it lists on the tin, let's just say. Then you've got Teetotaler. Oh god. Okay, so the pawn just does not like drugs. If they take any drugs, they get a mood negative. The problem is, you usually use drugs to counteract massive mood, mood negatives to begin with. For example, in this colony here, if we just go and grab our social drugs thing, this is my default policy on all colonies. If someone's mood goes below 35% because it's been a rough day, psychic drone, fights, diseases, stuff like that, they go and grab a beer. This will boost their mood. If their mood drops even further to 30%, they'll go grab a psych IT to boost their mood some more, and if it goes below 25% and we're getting into, like, extreme mental break threshold, they'll go and uh, chuck down a smoke leaf joint. This reduces their consciousness, which is why it's at the bottom. So this just helps stop a whole bunch of negative events from causing people to go and have mental breaks, and it's all automated and taken care of without you ever having to look at it once it's made up. Problem is you can't do that with teetotalers. You try and give a teetotaler one of those uh, schedules and, well, you're going to have huge problems because they're going to hate taking those drugs. So you have to put them on a, a, a no-drug schedule, which sort of ends up almost close to a, a negative moodlet bonus, bonus at that point because you cannot pull them out of negative mood spirals. Then we have Too Smart. Too Smart is sort of a double-edged sword. It increases your mental break threshold by 12 percentage points, which is not quite as bad as Volatile, which is plus 15. However, it has the bonus of giving you a plus 75% global learning factor. It's the uh, exact opposite of, say, slow learner. You're now able to learn 75% faster, which is actually pretty good. The problem is that mental break threshold on top of it kind of is a bit of a poison pill. Not terrible. There are ways around it, but I would prefer to avoid it if possible. And then nudist. This one's actually not that terrible. I used to avoid it like the plague, but I'm kind of... This is probably the least bad one of the lot. Uh, constrained clothes, minus three. That's it. You can wear as much clothing as you want, but you get a minus three mood penalty for it. Not really that bad, considering something like uh, Depressive over here gives you a minus 12 and Pessimist gives you a minus 6. A minus 3 all the time is pretty easy to deal with, and if you take off all their clothes, they get a plus 20 moodlet bonus, which can be handy at times, just not on an ice sheet. Next up, we've got the ones we mildly care about. In other words, they're pretty so close to don't care that I'm not even bothered moving them further across. And yes, I know my naming scheme is terrible, I should probably have A and S tiers, but uh, I, yeah, whatever, that doesn't sound right. So, we've got Creepy Breathing, An Annoying Voice, Misandrist, these three all pretty, or misogynist, uh, ugly and staggeringly ugly. All of these sort of follow the same theme. They give you a minus in social. So, for example, if we go into the social of this pawn and we go up to the top and look at, say, Slim. They have a minus 93 from Slim. Actually, let's go to Grey Ghost. Grey Ghost has a minus, 80, minus 98 for them if we go down to them. And here's why. Uh, they are physically hideous because of their ugliness, which is a minus 40 to their social, their annoying voices, tw minus 25, creepy breathing, minus 25, uh, no artificial body parts because of the ideology, but a uh, hard worker versus lazy. That's another one that's a bit weird to wrap your head around, but for example, Grey Ghost here has uh, the industrious trait, and because they have an industrious trait, they dislike people who are lazy. Um, yeah, it's just, it's one of those little quirks you never really get around to, and honestly, it doesn't really matter that much until you, if you, unless you want to get really deep down into things. Let's not go down those that deep. Anyway. The negative social is usually not that bad, except if you want them to marry or get into relationships or become lovers with someone. 
So one of these is usually not that bad. Creepy breathing on its own is fine. Misandrist on its own. Misogynist on its own. Or even ugly. Staggeringly ugly, I would try and avoid. That's a minus 40. That's really hard to come back from. you got to hold on until you get into the later game Bionics. And those later game Bionics are only accessible through the Royalty DLC, which is the Aesthetic Nose and the Aesthetic Shaper. They can actually give you plus one beauty apiece, removing the negative two beauty penalty. I would avoid, I would, one of these is probably fine, but two is terrible of those uh, creepy breathing, misandrous, misogynist, staggeringly ugly and ugly. The only exceptions I'd say is just say it's a female who hates females. That's fine because it's not going to affect their ability to get a lover or a male who hates males. Same thing. I'm not even sure if that's possible. I think it is though. Abrasive is one that's just a little bit weird. All it does is they insult people randomly. Uh, the problem with that is it can cause social fights. The people they insult will hate them at least for a while. It, it, it generally just results in more drama. Not the worst thing in the world, just tend to avoid it. Asexual means they can never get into any relationships. So no lovers, no mar no lovers, no marriage, no nothing like that. They're never going to get a gut loving bonus as far as I'm aware. It's just basically a flat negative. Uh, gay and gay is also a bit of a problem because honestly, you're just not going to get enough gay characters that you'll actually get them to hook up. So it's pretty much the same as asexual in a lot of ways. Then you've got Slowpoke. This just reduces their movement speed by about 0 0.20. This is a little bit worse than wearing a flak vest. It's about the same as wearing marine armor. So it's not the worst thing in the world, but you want to tend to avoid it because slows pawns get to their job slower and get to the front lines a little bit slower. But it's usually not a deal breaker. Before we go from mild care to don't care, I really feel like we should point out one thing when it comes to these traits. Most of the time, they don't really matter a lot. And what I mean by that is, say, Jeremy here. When I hired Jeremy, the only reason I hired them was because of their cooking stat. I needed a cook. And all I was, when I looked at their traits, the only thing I was looking at, would that interfere with them doing that job? The fact that they're nimble, don't care. Great memory, I mean, I suppose it helps a little bit, but I really don't care too much. Their cooking, once it goes above eight, means they're not going to poison anyone, and they're probably going to spend uh, half their time cooking, they're half the time grabbing the cooking ingredients to bring to the cooking thing. So it's not really that great of a bonus. And the misandrous bit, who cares? We can overpower that later. So when it comes to picking your pawns, you're usually just looking at the traits to make sure that they don't have anything that's going to negatively affect their purpose inside the colony. On the opposite end of the scale to that, we have Ralph. They were hired exclusively because they were an ascetic and we were looking to train someone up with the Empire. Uh, if you're getting someone up to a uh, Praetor or something like that with the Empire, it, you're, they're going to develop all of these needs, like a throne room, a bedroom, all this stuff, but ascetic completely cancelled out all those traits. So I wanted someone who had the ascetic trait. The fact that they were only good at animals was fine, um, but the only thing that I wanted to make sure was, even if they were an ascetic and this was their only trait, they were, they were actually capable of labour. The problem is if they're incapable of dumb labour, like sweeping or hauling, that means the only thing they'd be able to do would be animals, and then they wouldn't be able to do any other sidecrafts because they're not really good at anything. So if this person here had have had an ascetic incapable of dumb labour, I probably wouldn't have picked him. So that's the opposite end of the spectrum where you're picking someone for a trait that you specifically want, and you're not so worried about what are their traits over here. Which reminds me, I missed under mildly bad incapable of dumb labour. That means they can't haul or clean. Uh, refuel, rearm, there's a few things like that. Dumb labour, I put it under mildly bad. I tend to try and avoid it because it does reduce the effectiveness of a pawn because you are going to want to have a lot of people running around cleaning and hauling near about mid to late game. Anyway, let's get on to the don't care section. These are ones where we're not really that bothered. First up, we've got super immune. This one is pretty much self-explanatory. Immunity gain speed factor plus 30%. That sounds wonderful, but by and large it just means they recover from sicknesses just a little bit faster. More than likely, you, if you've got a decent colony and you're applying good medicine, you won't have to worry about anyone dying from from uh, diseases, so this just means they recover a little bit faster, so I don't really look out for it or not, it, it, who cares. Psychopath is just one word, they don't care about corpses, they don't care about people chopping up stuff. It basically makes them, uh, it removes some of the negative moodlet bonuses they can, they can get, but by and large you're not going to be doing most of those things anyway, so unless you're running a colony of all psychopaths, I, I wouldn't really advise this one. Uh, then you've got Kind. Kind is one of those weird ones in that it's, uh, it sort of completely cancels out all of these. Uh, kind means they don't mind what someone looks like, they don't judge a book by its cover basically, so it basically nullifies all social stuff, including the good and the bad. They won't be pre-inclined towards someone one way or the other, no matter how pretty they are, how ugly they are, how, and how much they sound like a weasel. It doesn't make a difference. It also means they're more likely to actually just go around and say nice things to people. The opposite of uh, someone being abrasive. It's not good or bad, it's just one of those things. Uh, great memory just means people lose their skills at half speed. Now this can be useful, but by and large for the majority of pawns, you don't care. Once the skill goes above 10, uh, 10 points, it starts to slowly lose its progress and go backwards. This just helps you keep those skills at a higher level for longer. Unless you're making a dedicated crafter, no one really cares. Uh, Night Owl just changes the sleep penalties. You get a penalty if you're awake during the day and a mood bonus if you're awake during the night. 
Generally though, I just stick everyone on a biphasic sleep pattern and try and keep them happy that way. You could set them to an entire night schedule, but honestly, it's really hard to keep them there. Uh, bisexual is, a, well, it's a bit like uh, gay and what's the other one? asexual. doesn't really make a difference. If you don't have someone who's gay, you're not going to be able to hook them up with someone, or if you don't have someone who's bisexual. So it really, it's just, it's a null trait at this point. Then you've got undergrounder. Undergrounder means they're happier when they're inside. They get a mood bonus being inside. This can be okay, but it can also be not so good. For example, this pawn here is currently outdoors, so they're outdoors at the moment and they've got a minus three. And they've even got a little mood bonus, mood bar down here. But when they're indoors, they're fine. Generally, it works out about even Steven. Once they get back inside, they're pretty happy. And generally, most of your killing goes on indoors, so having that bonus inside is not good or bad. I, that's why I generally put it here. And finally, you've got Nimble. This one can be great can, if you're making an actual brawler pawn. Uh, in fact, don't get Brawler. This is better than Brawler because you're far less likely to get hit. Their dodge chance is just incredible. And the less likely you are to get hit, the longer they can tank. Most of the time, your Brawlers are not doing damage. They're just there to soak, as in just sit there and get hit while your shooters behind them do all the damage. So keeping them less hit all the time makes Nimble much more powerful. But generally, you don't really care. Unless you're making a dedicated Brawler or a dedicated me melee blocker, you, you don't really need Nimble. Anyway... Now onto situational traits. These ones here are a mixed bag of good and bad, and we'll just start with aesthetic, which is the easiest one. If a pawn has aesthetic, it has a few negative effects outside of royalty. As in, you don't get any mood bonuses from having a super nice bedroom. Uh, in fact, having a really nice bedroom makes them gives them a, a negative moodlet bonus. So early on, it's really nice because they can eat terrible meals and be happy and sleep in terrible bedrooms and be happy. But late game, they could get more benefits from eating nice meals and sleeping in nice bedrooms. So it kind of flips. At the start, it's good. At the end, it's not as good. But it does mean that if the, you have the royalty DLC and you turn them into a noble, they don't care about the royalty requirements. Just like Ralph over here doesn't care. All of their, their needs for wanting specific... Uh, apparel and things like that is completely gone or having fancy bedrooms all of that is gone they're more than happy to share then you've got your psychic sensitivities psychically hypersensitive increases it uh, psychically sensitive also then psychically deaf which completely gets rid of your psychic abilities and psychically dull which halves it now in the base game psychically deaf was actually a bonus because it prevented psychic drones from having any negative effects on you and psychically dull was also a bonus it, it, it helped those psychic drones reduce the effects of them Psychically sensitive and hypersensitive were both negative to that because they increased the negative moodlet bonuses you could get from them. However, with the introduction of royalty and casting, these psychically sensitive and hypersensitive can be useful on a caster pawn. However, it really depends what you're using them for. For example, trying to get a psychically sensitive ascetic would be good for the Empire, but that's like you're, you're trying to roll two traits on one person, that's really hard. So psychically sensitive is usually better with tribals if you're doing a tribal setup and you want to get your tribal psychically sensitive people up. So it is good or bad, depending on which one you're using, and uh, there's no other way really to explain it than that. Then you've got your neurotics and your very neurotics. This is a global work speed bonus, which is quite nice, but it also increases your mental break threshold. Same with very neurotic, global work speed bonus and increases your mental break, mental break threshold. These are actually quite nice if you can combine them with other traits. Uh, for example, up here is both steadfast and neurotic. Now steadfast gives a plus 9% to uh, mental break threshold, neurotic gives a minus uh, or plus eight. So the way this works out is it's actually made them slightly harder to break overall while still keeping that 20% global work speed bonus. And that global work speed bonus can also be combined with other traits. For example, tree over here has industrious, which is a global work speed bonus we haven't covered yet, but this can increase your global work speed. Combine that with neurotic and you can get up to about 35%, which is kind of crazy. In fact, where is it? You've got Very Neurotic, which is a plus 40, so you can combine Very Neurotic and the other industrious bonus to get uh, plus 75% bonus to global work speed. At which point you're you're thinking, damn, that's a, a really crafty pawn. But usually I would not get these on their own unless, say, they had a double passion in crafting or something along those lines, and I knew it could keep them safe. Anyway, Cannibal. Okay, this one's very situational as well. If you're alone on an ice sheet with nothing else around, being able to eat the people who wander by, very valuable. Outside of that, almost no advantage. You can wear clothing made of human skin to increase your happiness, which is grand, but by and large, if you have to make clothing out of human skin, your other people are not going to be very happy in the colony, so generally you just don't, because you have to get, you just, yeah, not very, very, it's sort of a little bit of a situational thing. Tortured Artist. Some people love this. Basically, the pawn gets a minus eight mood bonus, minus eight mood bonus, but at the same time, every time they recover from a mental break, they have a 50% chance of having a creative inspiration. This can be used on construction, crafting, all sorts of stuff. The problem is, 
you do get that minus eight mood and you do have to keep mentally breaking them. So it's a lot of micromanagement. So generally I'm not up for it, but I know some people who swear by it. Yeah, you'll notice that we have gone through a lot of traits and we still haven't got to the ones I consider even good. Uh, yeah, th th there's a theme here running in RimWorld. Generally, there's not very many good, just straight up good traits that don't have any downsides. Now these ones I call mid-game traits, namely because by the time you hit mid-game, you can afford them, but early game, they might be problematic. The first up is greedy. Uh, needs a really impressive bedroom, otherwise they get a mood loss. So, yeah, greedy for an impressive bedroom, minus eight. However, if we give them an impressive bedroom, which is not that hard to give, then they stop having that minus eight. And by mid-game, you can easily afford to give all your pawns impressive bedrooms, so they don't care. And if someone has a better bedroom, they don't mind. Uh, yeah, because over here we've got Jealous. And Jealous over here is pretty bad because if anyone has a better bedroom than them, they're angry. So... Early on, that seems fine because everyone will have similar quality bedrooms, but later on that becomes really problematic. Whereas this one, it's just so long as they have a certain quality, they're good to go. Stick a statue in the room, they'll be happy out. Then comes chemical interest and chemical fascination. I used to hate these ones. I used to stay away from them because I figured they'd always end up as drug addicts. No, give them a beer. This here is Jarek Dane. They have been with the colony for eight, nine years, eight, eight years. And during those eight years, they have been set up on their own specific drug schedule. Uh, Jarek here is on one drink per day. That means once a day, every day, no matter what, they take a beer. Because of that, it fills up their chemical meter. Chemical is meter is listed here under needs, and you can see this chemical meter that's up to 95%. That is really great because it gives them a plus six mood bonus. So by drinking one beer every day, forever, they get a plus six mood. The problem is, it's not perfect. Now, by and large, I've had wonderful results with this, but I have had one drug addiction throughout the entire thing, and I'm not exactly sure why. It can happen. Ralph here has also been a colonist for six years, and Ralph also has chemical interest. Not chemical fascination, chemical interest, which is the milder variant of it. Yet somehow, despite being on the same thing, they've managed to pick up alcoholism along the way. They became an alcoholic after about five years, so it's pretty rare for it to happen. And also so that, despite being addicted for a while, they still haven't really gone into any negatives. So as far as I can see... Once you hit mid-game and you can afford to produce beer on your own or you've got a decent supply of it because you've got enough traders going by, yeah, just feed them a beer every now and then and it usually takes care of the problem. And chemical interest is usually a pretty big negative on a pawn, so they usually have some decent stats to go with it. So yes, do not fear the uh, the chemical fascination or chemical, chemical interest. Just set up their, their traits to only have one beer a day. Another thing you can do is set it up so that they can't access any other drugs. Now, I have let them roam around a bit and they haven't managed to, but if we go under our zones here, this year is our no drugs zone policy. They're not allowed into the Lucy, the uh, any of the the harder drugs, they're not allowed near them, uh, except for the smoke leaf. Why is the smoke leaf there? Hmm, I really should have removed that from the, the zones. Never mind. But yeah, you can zone them out of drugs and they won't break the zones to go get them. However, you can tell them not to consume the drugs and they will actually go and consume those ones. So zoning them out of places is usually far safer if you want to keep them out of your drug pile, especially if you're producing large amounts of psychite or highly addictive drugs like flake or things like, or yayo and stuff like that. Anyway, those are what I would call uh, mid-game drugs, mid-game traits that once it hits mid-game, you can comfortably afford to take them on. Whereas early game, yeah, chemical fa the chemical ones and the greedy ones would be harder to maintain. Mildly good. When I say mildly good, I would like these traits and they usually would counteract some mild negatives that would show up. For example, Trigger Happy here gives a minus 50% reduction to aim time. Now that's pretty good. It makes the sniper rifle pretty much a, a snap shooter and things like that. However, it gives you minus five to your shooting accuracy. This is one of the, you'd need some boosters on their shooting accuracy or they'd want to be pretty good to start with before you're going to be throwing a sniper rifle on them. But give them some closer edge weaponry, auto shotgun, heavy SMG, and they're just going to blast stuff down. And even late game, it's really, in fact, the later in the game, the better you have this on. Uh, as well as that works really well with a minigun. On top of that, you can get things like the shooting specialist. So, for example, Petro Massimo here is a shooting specialist. And because of that, they get a whole bunch of bonuses, including their aiming time is reduced by 50%. That stacks with quick shooter, meaning if you have a quick shooting shooting specialist, they don't have an aim time. They just instantly lock onto a target and fire. I still have to do the reload animation, but yeah, it does mean that it's insane watching a go juice shooting specialist sniper run around the map and just instantly snap off shots while running around. It's it's crazy fast. As well as that, you do have the marksmanship command. The marksmanship command affects all pawns in a radius. Uh, where is Petra at the moment? So any pawn in range gets hit by the marksmanship command. This reduces their aiming time by 40%. So if you have a quick shooter and they're in range of the marksmanship command, it reduces their aim time to 10% of its normal amount. This means you can stack this up. Now the shooting specialist is only available in the ideology DLC, so it's not available in the base and it's not available in royalty. But yeah, this, even outside of royalty or ideology, this is still a really nice trait to have. 
Also works, remember, with jump jet packs and casting. So if you've got a caster or somebody who's going to be jump jet packing around the place, this is also a handy little feature. Oh, and that uh, shooting accuracy, the aim time also works on doomsdays. So if you're trying to get someone in range to do a doomsday on a cluster of enemies, probably give to the trigger happy pawn if you can. Now, body modder. This one is actually a negative when you first get it, because unless the pawn has a body modification, they get a negative moodless of body modder frustrated minus four. However, the moment you give them a artificial body part, even if it's just a peg leg, they actually become happy with it. And the more you give them, the better they get. I would put this up there with mildly good. I'm willing to live with the minus four, because at least once you get, like, later in the game, you are going to be bionicking everyone up. They're just going to become happier and happier as time goes by. Then you've got your beautiful and your pretty. Plus one and plus two beauty. Plus one beauty means plus 20 social from everyone. Just straight up, unless they're kind. Kind counteracts all beauty. Kind people don't notice beauty, you see. Uh, beautiful gives plus 20 beauty, which is actually plus 40 social. And that's the maximum you can get out of uh, being looking good, basically. If you, exam for example, put an aesthetic nose or aesthetic shaper on someone with uh, plus two beauty, it doesn't actually help their social in any way, shape, or form. But this trait can have some weird side effects. If someone has more than 20 social with your pawns, they're automatically classified as a friend, and if they die, your people will be sad. So I've had instances where allies have shown up on the tile, one of them was beautiful, and then they got killed on my tile due to a raid, and then all of my pawns were sad because they had lost a friend, and that sadness lasts for like 8 to 12 days or something, I can't remember. It can be a little bit frustrating when it happens that way. And do be aware, if any of your beautiful pawns die, it will also affect everyone else. So, yeah, use with caution, but it's definitely usually a good thing in terms of they get into more relationships, they're more likely to get lovers, they're more likely to uh, end up married. Then you've got Masochist. This is just nice. Basically, when they get hurt, they get happy. This means if you're on a firing line and they get into any fights, uh, they're generally going to be happy out of it and they're far less likely to break than most other pawns, especially when they get injured. Also, when they get sick, stuff like that, it all makes them happy. Pain makes them happy. It's just good generally to have it on a pawn. Then you've got Bloodlust. This one, I almost put this into the good tier. It's really close, though. If this pawn... With Bloodlust kill someone, they get a mood bonus. If this pawn with Bloodlust sees someone get killed, they get a mood bonus. They're both two separate mood bonuses. Them killing someone directly and seeing someone else kill someone both add up at stacked mood bonuses. And I think it stacks up to about five. After a big fight, they are like their, their mood is sky high and they're far less likely to break. And after big fights is usually when most pawns are most likely to break. So this means they're almost unbreakable after a good fight, especially if they've killed a bunch of people. But that's not the only use for them. In the base game, their greatest use is they don't care about rotten corpses. They're the, this is the only trait that gets rid of that mood negative. Psychopaths don't care about regular corpses, but rotten corpses annoy everyone and affect their mood. They are brilliant for putting on a corpse disposal detail because they can just go and dispose of the corpses and they will have no negative effects from it. Uh, there's, the new DLC coming out will introduce corpse rot, which could make things more complicated. But in the base game, bloodlust is pretty much an amazing trait to have. Uh, the new Ideology DLC allows you to get rid of the negatives from corpses, so it's not nearly as useful, which is why it's been reduced from good to mildly good. Next up, we've got your good traits. Now, these ones just have no downsides whatsoever. Quick Sleeper. Well, okay, maybe a tiny downside. Quick Sleeper just means that your rest rate is multiplied by 50%. They sleep really fast and wake up much earlier than everyone else, meaning they have more productive hours during the day. One minor quirk to it, though, is... They wake up after such little sleep, and because of the way the 24-hour sleep cycle works, they end up coming, getting tired before it's time for them to go to bed, meaning they keep running out of sync with the rest of your pawns because they keep hitting exhaustion and just going to bed before they're supposed to. And then they sleep so fast it happens all over again, and they keep falling out of sync. Best bet, make sure you're on a biphasic sleeping pattern to take advantage of it, unless they have to go long distances or something. Otherwise, I would advise sticking a circadian assistant into them, which reduces which reduces their rest fall rate, meaning they'll stay in sync with everyone else and still have all the benefits of quick sleeper. In fact, they'll, they'll spend so little time in bed, it's kind of crazy. Uh, do be aware, though, that the circadian assistant, I believe it's still affected by EMP, so they become EMP... Uh, they become have a weakness to EMP after that. Anyway, next up is hard worker. Just a plus 20% to global work speed. How could you not love that? Industrious. Plus 35% to global work speed. Yep, pretty much self-explanatory. However, you know, they need to be on a pawn that can take advantage of it. Usually one in construction. Well, usually crafting is what you want that on. A pawn with hardworking or industrious and crafting is amazing. Outside of that, not really so much. Also artistic, I suppose, would work. Then you've got your iron-willed and steadfast. This just is a straight-up bonus to your mental break threshold. It's much, much harder to break upon with these. Now, you see those layers on there? You need to get them down to 8% for a minor break, uh, minus 4.6 for major. Like, it's really hard to break them. Their mood has to bottom out before they actually have any negatives. So, Iron Willed is great. Iron, Iron, sorry. Iron Willed is amazing. Steadfast is great. And they have no negatives to them at all. Uh, then you've got your Fast Walker and Jogger. A Fast Walker is good. Speeds you up. Jogger 
absolutely amazing. Having a, an early game pawn that's a jogger will allow you to outrun and kite most enemies, give them a sniper rifle. In fact, if you've got a quick shooting jogger, it's, it's amazing what they can get done. But even a jogger on their own, absolutely incredible gets rid of the need for go juice and the risks that come with it. That's not even taking into account that they can get to and from their jobs even faster. Having a fast walker or jogger who's just running around doing uh, cleaning or hauling is amazing because they can do it faster than anyone else. Give them some bionic legs as well. They're just, there's no downsides to a fast walker or a jogger. Fast learner, just straight up upsides with this one. Plus 75% global learning factor. This makes even say this pawn's shooting skill learn almost as fast as someone who has a single passion. Not quite, but it's pretty close. It means they are pretty much a jack of all trades, making them really, really useful. If someone's got a burning passion in crafting and fast learner, they're just going to rocket up that uh, experience tree. And then finally, we have tough. This would be my best pick for traits. This thing is just incredible. Halves all damage to your pawn. Now, you have to get hit for that sake effect, but it does mean getting one shot is almost impossible, as long as you have good armor. If you have good armor on a pawn, it's almost impossible for them to get, for them to get one shot into death by anything, because any damage that penetrates that armor is going to be halved. It's just, no, it, there's no better trace. In fact, if you were making a pawn that was going to be a brawler, I would suggest that you get a tough pawn with nimble. A tough pawn with nimble is much harder to hit and will take half damage when they are hit and they'd last an awful lot longer. Brawler is not nearly as good. Uh, the trifecta, which is almost impossible to get, is tough, uh, nimble, brawler. If you get a tough, nimble brawler, you have the trifecta, but a tough, nimble pawn would probably be uh, reasonably attainable in like a long game. Now as you play the game there's going to be this sort of uh, inevitable change in priorities as the game progresses. For example this was a, a single colonist start so the colonist I started with was pretty much uh, whichever one had construction six or higher. Then the first pawn I hired I wanted someone with crafting so this pawn was hired specifically for crafting and the chemical fascination and night hell weren't worth it. It was literally the only reason they were picked was because of this crafting skill and that they were capable of most things. Uh, that tech support role was added later that's what got rid of their ability to do crafting and all that. Then we've got to get around to our next pawn, which was mining and construction, which were two traits we desperately needed because we didn't have enough uh, mining and mining going on. I mean, they'll do a little bit of plants on the side, also nice. They covered a few gaps. Their traits of Undergrounder and Iron Wilt had nothing to really do with it. Uh, then you've got plants, animals, and this one was primarily hired to just fill in numbers, be on the line, and occasionally do some... Uh, some hauling and things, but you notice industrious, tough and ugly don't really help too much. That industrious is kind of nice, it makes them harvest plants faster, but you didn't really care. And that's sort of the point, like this one here, Petromasso, he was hired specifically to be a shooting specialist later on, but I just made sure they, were incap they weren't incapable of dumb labour so they could do hauling and cleaning, which is what their main purpose is when they're not shooting people. And then as it goes along, you'll usually just be filling in roles. It's not the traits that are important, it's the roles you're trying to fill. For example, yeah, Dita here, we wanted them for cooking and plants, and the careful shooting thing, we were willing to live with it, even the slowpoke, because they're going to be spending most of their time indoors by the cooking stove. Uh, but then, as we went along, we got to, where is it yet, yeah, Jeremy, also a lot of cooking going on, mining. This was the, the point where I got my hands on deep drills, and mining needs exploded, so I hired pawns specifically for their mining skill. Uh, so, as you can see, undergrounder, misogynist, and nimble, none of these traits applied. It didn't matter. This pawn was hired specifically for crafting, uh, and look, Undergrounder Cannibal, not any traits that help with it. There's the odd one that will show up that was good, say, where is it? Oh, yeah, this pawn was hired it, precisely because they're an ascetic. Uh, this pawn was hired for mining. This pawn was hired for crafting. Now, they had great memory and industrious, so I went out of my way to get their hands on this one. But by and large, it's only near the end that this starts happening, where you start, try to start picking out perfect pawns, ones that are great for the task at hand. So you start looking out for ones that are industrious, great memory, fast learning, all of that type of stuff, but usually paired exclusively with crafting. For most of the rest of the game, you just want traits that are not going to negatively affect your pawns and make them you know, harder to manage than they need to be. To put this another way, all you're really looking for is traits that don't negatively affect the pawns you're running. For example, we can, we can check out Tree here. They have a great memory, they're industrious, uh, they're a teetotaler and their crafting is at 20. You know, wonderful crafter, they're amazing. However, we also have Charlie over here who's got crafting 20 and no bonuses to anything. And then we've got Valiant over here who also has 20 crafting, no bonuses either. So you can still get the level 20 crafter so long as you're willing to put in the time and the effort. Just in case, Tree is just going to be 35% faster at doing the job. I could, of course, replace people's arms with bionics to speed them up and all sorts of things. But realistically, not super necessary. What's more important, in my opinion, depending on your playstyle, is usually to have pawns that are going to have survivability traits. Like being tough fast that stuff never goes out of fashion also being steadfast and optimist iron willed sanguine uh, quick sleeper all these things result in them 
not being less likely to break, having more productive hours in the day, being less likely to get tired when they're fighting on the line. That's also why bloodlust and masochists are two ones that are up there, and pretty and beautiful result in them getting into more relationships, which results in them having a, a lover's bonus and gut-loving bonus and uh, spouses and bonuses and things like that. This all keeps them happier. Trigger Happy is in there because it's just a straight-up damage boost once you get past the, the early to mid-game. It'd be higher up if it wasn't for the fact that it was, gave that minus five shooting accuracy. All of the ones that affect you badly are the ones that are going to reduce mood and make your pawns more likely to break, because mental breaks is what will break you. If you're willing to craft, like, just enormous amounts of stuff, you can get any crafter up to, like, ridiculous levels. It just takes a bit of time. And so long as you've got good enough pawns to defend them, you'll make that time. Anyway, that is my uh, tier list of all the traits, if you want to call it that. Realistically, though, the, the best traits are the ones that keep you alive the longest. Anyway, I uh, hope you enjoyed. Good luck. Thank you.